Hello everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Jocelyn Dion, a junior high school math teacher. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget also to click the notification bell so you won't miss any of my video. By the way, most of the videos that I'm going to upload are math lessons. For today's video, I'm going to discuss to you about the introduction to sequences. This is the first lesson for grade 10 for this school year. Our objectives for having this video are the following. First, describe and generate a sequence. This is one of the milks for first quarter for the grade 10. Second, differentiate finite from infinite sequence. Third, find specific terms in a sequence. After watching this video, you will be able to answer the following guide questions. First, how will you describe a sequence? Second, what is the difference between finite and infinite sequence? And third, how to find the specific term in a sequence? What is a sequence? A sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. Always remember that the domain is only positive integers. It is also an ordered list of numbers. Its number in a sequence is what we call as term. In the example 3, 5, 7, 9, there are four terms. A sequence is finite if its domain is the set of positive integers which has a last term n. Example of finite sequence 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The first term is 3. The second term is 4. The fifth or the last term is 7. Since the sequence has a last term, then it is a finite sequence. We can also use symbol to denote first term, second term, and so on. a sub 1 for first term, a sub 2 for second term, a sub 3 for third term, and a sub 4 for fourth term. In the example of a finite sequence 3, 4, 5, 6, our first term or a sub 1 is equal to 3, our a sub 2 or the second term is 4, our a sub 3 or the third term is 5, our fourth term or a sub 4 is 6. Now, what is an infinite sequence? A sequence is infinite if its domain is the set of positive integers without last term. In the sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on, our first term is 2, our second term is 5, our third term is 8, our fourth term is 11. The sequence has no last term then it is called an infinite sequence. So how will we know that it has no last term? Because of the presence of ellipsis denoted by these three dots. It signify that a sequence continues. Now let us try to have a comparison between finite and infinite sequence. 
Example 1 on the finite sequence. We have 6, 8, 10, 12. On infinite sequence, we also have 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. Now, as you can see, they are almost the same, but the only difference is that for the infinite sequence, there is an ellipsis. Example 2. We have 6, 10, 14, 18. And for the example 2 under infinite sequence, we have 6, 10, 14, 18, and so on. Again, you can still see the presence of ellipsis. Third example, under finite sequence, we have 4, 8, 12, and so on. And the last term is 80. If you have observed, we have here the presence of the ellipsis. But the ellipsis is placed at the middle. So therefore, this is still considered as finite sequence. On the other hand, if you have infinite sequence, 4, 8, 12, and so on, the ellipsis is placed at the last. So that is the difference between finite and infinite sequence. Now, how were the terms in the sequence 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 derived? Actually, we were able to derive that from substituting the set of positive integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the formula a sub n equals n plus 2, where our a sub n is the n term and n is the term position. Now, for our solution, we have this. Our formula is n plus 2. Now, when we are going to solve for the first term, that is when our n equals 1. So, first, copy the formula n plus 2, then substitute your n by 1. So, you have now 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So, 3 is our first term. Now, when we're going to solve for the second term, that is when n is equal to 2. So, first, again, copy the formula. Then, this time, substitute your n by 2. And you add 2 plus 2. So, you have 4. So, 4 is our second term. Now, solving for the third term, that is when the value of n is equal to 3. So again, copy the formula n plus 2, or n this time is 3. And 3 plus 2, you have 5. So therefore, 5 is the third term. If n is equal to 4, that is when we are solving for the fourth term. The same, copy the formula n plus 2. This time, substitute your n by 4, and you add 4 plus 2, so you have 6. That is the fourth term. Now, if we're going to solve for the fifth term, that is when the value of n is equal to 5. So, you have the formula n plus 2. This time, substitute your n by 5. And 5 plus 2 is 7. So, you have now the fifth term. If you have observed, we were able to derive the terms in the sequence 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, how about the terms in a sequence 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and so on derived? Okay, actually, they were derived from substituting the set of positive integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the formula a sub n equals 3n minus 1, where a sub n equals the n term. And n is the term position. So for our solution, we have here, if n is 1, we are going to substitute n by 1. So copy first the formula, 3n minus 1, substitute. 3 times 1, that is 3, you copy, minus 1. And 3 minus 1 is 2. That is the first term. Now when n is 2, so you copy 3n minus 1, substitute n by 2. So 3 times 
2, we have 6. And 6 minus 1 is 5. Now, that is the second term. Now, if we're going to solve for the third term, that is when n is equal to 3. So, you have the formula 3n minus 1, substitute n by 3, and 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Then you copy minus 1, and 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. So, that is now the third term. If n is equal to 4, that is the time when we are going to substitute our n by 4. So, 3 times 4 is 12. And 12 minus 1 is 11. So, that is now our fourth term. If n is equal to 5, we are solving for the fifth term. So, this time, substitute n by 5. So, 3 times 5 is 15. And you copy minus 1. 15 minus 1 is 14. So, we have now the fifth term. So, if you have observed, we were able to derive the terms 2, 5, 8, 11, and 14. Based on the examples, we were able to generate a sequence from the given n term formula and we substitute n with values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what if we are tasked to find the first three terms of the sequence a sub n equals 3n minus 2? How are we going to find the first three terms of that sequence? So, for our solution, we're going to substitute n by 1, 2, and 3. So, the given formula a sub n equals 3n minus 2. Why up to 3 only? It's because we are only tasked to find the first three terms. So if n equals 1, we have the formula, substitute your n by 1, so 3 times 1 minus 2. And 3 minus 2, I know, I mean 3 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So, 1 is the first term. If n equals 2, so again, copy the formula, substitute n by 2. So, 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 minus 2 is 4. So, this is now the second term. Now, if n equals 3, so you have a sub n equals 3n minus 2. And this time, substitute n by 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. You copy minus 2. And 9 minus 2 is 7. So, therefore, the first three terms of a sequence, a sub n equals 3n minus 2 are 1, 4, and 7. Now, what if we are tasked to find the specific term in a sequence? Say, for example, find the fifth term, 11th term, and 20th term of the sequence a sub n equals 5n plus 1. So, for our solution, we're going to substitute n by 5 when we're going to solve for the fifth term, 11 when we're going to solve for the 11th term, and 20 when we're going to solve for the 20th term. Solving for the fifth term, that is if n equals 5. a sub n equals 5n plus 1, that is the formula. This time, substitute your n by 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Then you copy plus 1, so 25 plus 1, so you have 26. So therefore, 25 plus 1 is 26. This is now the fifth term. Now, solving for the 11th term, that is when the value of n is equal to 11. So, first, copy the formula, then substitute your n by 11. So, 5 times 11 
is 55 plus 1. The answer is 56. So we have now the 11th term. Now solving for the 20th term, that is when the value of n is equal to 20. Again, copy the formula a sub n equals 5n plus 1 and substitute your n by 20. So 5 times 20 is 100 and 100 plus 1 is 101. So this is now our 20th term. So therefore, our fifth term is 26, 11th term is 56, and our 20th term is 101. My dear students, always remember that the only way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics, and that is according to Paul Hamos. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you learned something from it. And if you learned something, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Again, thank you and God bless you all.